morning. Welcome to the facilities committee meeting on March, what are we, 9th, 10th? I don't even know. 10th, sorry. <laughs> um, the first item on the agenda is discussion of the Darien High, Darien High School Stadium Lights Agreement. So we have been tasked to review the, the uh, agreement regarding the conditions of approval from planning and zoning. Um, and in reviewing it, I think the at least one person's opinion is that the agreement is very prescriptive in there. There, there are sections that talk about having certain games by certain teams. Um, and personally, I think that should be the purview of the Board of Education and not the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, as well as there are a few other minor elements like talking about the that we can use only use them on the 4th of July and I'm not sure we use them on the 4th of July with the fireworks and it's normally a different day. So I think that it just needs to kind of be cleaned up. Um, so if we can kind of go through that today, I think it'd be great. Alan, do you have any comments or? No, I just, yeah, it just would be a good morning, everyone. Uh, it just would be nice to, uh, you know, advance the discussion with recommendations or otherwise. Um, so happy to participate. Um, and I'm sure we'll have recommendations if that's what the uh, if that's what the uh, board uh, board of education would like to, to to receive from the administration as part of that process. Okay. And uh, before I continue, I think the the first part is I think we we've, we've uh, had a great relationship with the neighborhood, and we're very happy with the the relationship that we've had. I think the neighbors are happy with the way we've we've stuck to our our. Um, our word with our agreement and not have, have overdone that. Uh, and, and by no means do I think we are looking to overwhelm and, and change this, the, 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 the tone of the agreement and, and we're just trying to clean it up. Yeah, and, and if I may, please. Um, you know, I have an interesting advantage because I served as um, planning and zoning chair as this application went through the uh, planning and zoning commission. And I think you know, the, the role of, of the Board of Education is care, custody, control over, over its facilities. And um, at the time, you know, for whatever reasons, the superintendent and the board thought that there should be a binding agreement, a standstill agreement for five years. And that put in motion the uh, special permit application and final resolution of the conditions that were outlined in the uh, January 17th, 2017 approval. Um, you know, as we know, and as we've been briefed, this agreement will go away, if you will, with the neighbors. So, you know, if I, if I may suggest that when we bring this to the board and, and discuss the conditions, we refer to the uh, adopted resolution with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And I know they seem one in the same, but, you know, the agreement that was signed with the, um, with the uh, neighbors will, in fact, you know, dissipate if we do go to planning and zoning and we do get approved for amendment. So I think, you know, just from a, a uh, process standpoint, I think it's better if we, if we, again, they're the same thing, um, but we, when we kind of discuss it, we focus on the final resolution and what we might uh, do as a board um, in changing some of these conditions, which you so rightly said, Dennis, um, you know, limits the, the district in doing what it, it should be able to do and that's have proper care custody control over this um i just might add i think it's important that we do get uh input from the community just like field traditional field use field use under the light is is both used as a resource for the school district as well as the community um and then of course uh, get to get comments from the neighbors but i i concur i don't think there's a large uh significant change to the structure of yeah, to the structure of light use and the days and the times. Um, I don't think anybody's looking for that, but to your point, looking to quote unquote, clean it up would be, uh, I think a, a, a good thing for this board to do. Yeah, John, Dennis, just, Mike. thank you. Um, just, just to review, so, so there's two different issues. Both of you have just outlined that the agreement itself is somewhat prescriptive and while we are probably looking to keep the overall parameters the same, how those parameters are exercised, we're looking to give that authority to the school. Um, and But the other piece, and just, just so that I understand the nomenclature correctly, is we have a standstill agreement and we actually would like to have a special permit. Is that correct? Uh, 
Can you explain? Yeah, that? yeah. The, again, it's, so the standstill agreement is in conjunction um, in, in basically a, the, the, the uh, as I understand it, in, in 2017, this, the agreement was formed with the neighbors and a resolution between the neighbors and the district and, and the Board of Education was reached as long as the conditions of the agreement were included in the special permit. Okay. So the special permit does exist. Okay. It's a planning and zoning approval. Okay. We would, in, in any shape, way, or form, if we change one line in this, we would have to go to a planning and zoning commission mm -hmm. for a right. formal application. Right. The agreement with the neighbors, once we do that, though, would dissipate. Mm -hmm. There would be no agreement in, in, uh, because that's the way the agreement is written, um, as I understand it. Um, yeah. Personally, and, I, and it'd be a strong recommendation of board. We don't, we we should not enter into another standstill agreement, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know that should just dissipate. We shouldn't tie the hands of future boards if you know they want to make changes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something we can discuss as a board. Clearly, that's not something we're going to do as a committee here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a strong recommendation on my part as a board member that we don't enter into another standstill agreement. But with the full understanding, again, in communication with the community that we're not looking to change the parameters of the use of lights all that right. much. Right. So, you know, again, in, in terms of best practice, can you talk a little bit, just picking your brain here, because you were on PNC, the standstill agreements, where do you sit on that in general as a use of that as a tool? Uh, what was your experience? I mean, I, I'm adamantly against them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to rehash history too much, but it was done without the knowledge of the commission or the board of the selectmen or the town in general. Right. It's kind of done behind the scenes and then right. the peer. Right. Um, I, you know, I, as a, as a public official, you know, tying the hands of future public officials, I don't think is a good idea. Okay. Um, I realize it does bring some comfort to, to, you know, certain, a small group of people that, you know, change won't happen over this time period. But I think at this juncture and the way the lights have been used and in this particular issue, you know, I think the district, the community has proven itself. The, the technology has been remarkably amazing. You know, I don't think any of us expected how great that LED lighting would be to contain the lights. Um, and so it's just, again, managing around the use of lights, giving the board and the administration proper control over the facility um, without binding any of our future boards. Okay. Um, that's my opinion. Mike and Alan, do we have any other standstill agreements around our facilities that exist, or is this the only one? Or Rich, whoever knows this. Sarah, do you have any comments or questions? No. Okay. So, how does the committee want to do this? Do we want to throw this to? Alan and the team to kind of go through what they feel should be corrected, or do we want to point them in that direction of where? Yeah, I think at this juncture, you know, unless Alan, you have a different different view, I would just like to go through the adopted resolution, just point out the areas that we should be discussing as a board. You know, we've given a little recommendations here. I think, you know, you've mentioned the July 4th light. So I think, you know, literally in a way, just take a highlighter to this document. Um, and just so we can bring it forth to the board and say, okay, these are the areas that we could should consider. And Alan and your team, you know, you can come back, you know, with input from Chris as well. You know, is there certain things that don't work adequately or, or um, optimally for for the use of the lights? I.e., you know, the re I'm just guessing, but the restrictions on which games are played. You know, only varsity games, no JV games, that sort of thing. Um, we as board members should go through and. You know, knowing our community and see if we have any adjustments. You know, your your example of July Fourth is a, is a good one. It's clear that an attorney wrote this without knowledge of the the fireworks, right? We, we tend not to do it on July Fourth, but it's a lot cheaper if you don't do it on July Fourth, as I understand it. And there's a lot of other things going on, on July Fourth. Um, and then we can also ask the community as as a board um, to for some input. And uh, you know, Alan and Duke can kind of work through how they want to structure like a community discussion or public discussion or something like that, or just ask for emails. Um, but I think if that makes sense, we yeah. should just maybe go through the document. Highlights you want to, I'm well, looking it, at section two, proposed conditions of approval for lighting facilities plans. Okay, so which, which document, just so we're on? on. Uh, I'm using the document from 
that was forwarded to all. Okay, so, so you're okay, so you're using the agreement regarding the conditions of approval. Correct. Okay, okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, and and again, that this will there's different section numbers in the adopted resolution, okay. but we we can go to that document during the board meeting. Right. So since resolve. all we have is yes, this now, I think exactly. This is what we should okay. Be using. So okay, go ahead. So um, so I'm looking at section two proposed conditions of approval for lighting facilities plan as you brought up as well. Um, number six, only DHS varsity games will be played under the lights. I'm not sure if we, we do that or we want to do that. I mean, why couldn't it be a club or? Uh, yeah, let's go through it. If, if we could start, start to, at the yeah, stop. Just go okay, through go the stop, the, the top, and you know, we'll, we'll just put check marks next to each one. So, John, could you, could you just clarify? I just, uh, sorry, again, just which document we're working from. Sorry. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Alan, we sorry, could, you just, could you just clarify which document we're working from, please? Oh, yeah. It, so it is uh, agreement regarding conditions of approval. It's the one you, you circulated. Sent, you sent in the packet. Okay. All right. Okay. And it looks to be section two. 4.5 appendix proposed conditions. Oh, yes. Yes. That, oh, yes. Yes. That's where I'm. Yep. Okay. So we're... Section 2A, field use when lighting facilities in use. Only only daring sports and daring nonprofit and sports organizations will be permitted. That seems like a reasonable, reasonable unless request. unless the administration says they've been approached and you know a big money maker, but I, I would doubt <laughs> that. Um, youth practices, practices, you go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So youth practices, I think is okay for me. Youth games, I don't know, maybe it's something the community would want to weigh in on. Um, no deep adult league play for me is okay, personally. If anyone has any comments, please feel free to jump in. And then DHF athletic teams must be participating in all contests. Again, I think is okay, unless we have a, a question if we want to host a CIAC playoff game, but I think we would do that only when we are the hosts. But um, I, I leave that up to Alan and maybe Mr. Manfredonia. And then the last one for me is, is a the question mark is only varsity games will be played under the lights. Again, I don't know that we wouldn't want to do other a club or a, or a JV game or something like that. So to me, again, that would be a question to the administration to look into that. Just Roman numeral five, DHS athletic teams. If, if for some reason we go to allow youth sports to, to have games under lights, we would just want to change that language. Okay. Something to call out. Um, I think it's probably worth just taking out, I think we know the answer, but just understanding what our field utilization is, because I think because our field utilization is so high, some of these things are irrelevant. Like we don't need the revenue from, for example, an adult league. Um, and we don't have the time, I believe, to accommodate an adult league anyway. So I think for us at this point in time, Mike, please correct me if I'm wrong, that's sort of an irrelevant point. It might be something future boards would be interested in, but- We don't have any goal. And the fields are utilized from 100%, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it would just be worth knowing that in the conversation. Good point. You know, yeah. Our utilization is at probably 101% or something. Any other questions there? No. no. So section B, time limitations. Lights will remain off on Saturdays and Sundays with the exception of FCAC playoff or championship games. So like, again, FCAC, it would be CIAC. CIAC or, you know, you would maybe even just take that word out because um, it, again, it was some, clearly somebody wrote this that didn't understand there's CIAC playoff games as well. So, you know, another nit to fix. Uh, if we decide to keep keep that and and you know the question is uh yeah are there are there youth organizations that might want to use lights on saturday evenings or something like that right. and again i don't i'm not going to weigh in on my but that's something the board should discuss yeah that's number two practices and other activities will be monday through friday with lights off by 7 30. again i think 7 30 is a little early for me um but again, that, that may be a discussion if we want yeah. to pursue going further with that. Um, number three, in the event Darien High School games were, that were appropriately scheduled to start by 4 p.m. 
and 5.30 game two and end by 7.30, but could not finish within the prescribed 7.30 time. Allowances will be made for completion of the game, regardless of the hour of completion. So to me, this kind of <laughs> is a bit, a bit messy. Um, how does so, it, how do, sorry. Yeah, please. Jill. Mike, how does, how does that work for you guys or Rich, whoever, or Alan? That, that particular bullet. It, it doesn't really affect us. You know, it's a little game runs a little longer. People help them with the parking and stuff just work a little longer. And, okay. You know, but they can turn the lights on and off easily. Okay. Clearly, the time frame was an issue, and they added a provision to in the event that the time frame. So right. again, if you change the time frame, that wouldn't even have to exist. Okay. Yeah, uh, I also you know wonder if I you know if we did something like this with this handcuff future boards from changing school start times to a later time, if it lights have to be shut off and they can't have a game, it seems a little. Uh, silly to have have the uh, a field usage decide whether or not we could change our school. Not that we're planning on changing school opening right. times, but it right. you know maybe a future discussion at some point. So, okay. um, number four, lights will remain off from the end of the CIAC fall season until sorry, the beginning. Sorry. Yes, please. Going back to that seven thirty, do we know why that number was chosen? Is there is it just a quality of life? Is that what it was? It was my understanding as part of the agreement, and that was one of the concerns that you know lights on until eleven p.m. and that, that was the time that was agreed upon. Again, brought forth after the agreement was signed to the planning and zoning commission. So again, just to be clear, like planning and zoning commission did not have really any leeway, right? Because the basically the applicant presented oh, something the there. agreement already there. So at the time, it was like okay, the agreement struck. He did didn't get to weigh in on quality of life or anything like that. Okay. Any other questions here? No, sir. Okay. So number four, lights will remain off from the end of the CIAC fall season until the beginning of the CIAC spring season. And from B, from the end of the CIAC spring season to the beginning of the CIAC fall season. That, that's just basically you don't have lights on in the winter and the summer. Right. <laughs> I think we're okay with that. But again, uh, Five Friday night games can extend until 10 p.m. Each varsity team will have the opportunity to play no more than two games per season on a Friday night exclusive of mandated playoff games. So this is one where, you know, you're allowing Friday night games, but you're prescribing how many games per team. And it was, I, I think as you, got, as you guys have witnessed, like it's been a tremendous community asset of having soccer games, field hockey games, football games, um, but to prescribe how many per team, um, I think it's a little overly prescriptive and the item that I want to discuss as a board. Do, can, can we get a little color on that? I mean, what, the, what, does, what does that end up looking like? Do we find that, are there Fridays where there are no games being played? Um, that, that's exactly what ends up happening. Okay. You know, you have, there's, there's varsity lacrosse, two varsity soccer, field hockey and football. So that's only 12. Oh, games a year spread over two seasons. Okay. Over maybe 20 weekends. Okay. So there are Friday nights where there's no activity on that field. Okay. So when this comes to the board, can we see that documented so that we understand what the usage looks like, please, on Friday nights? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, uh, and Jill, I think it, uh, all of these will be reviewed closely with uh, Mr. Manfredoni in terms of all of the implications. Thank you. Thank you. Um, C, evening games. Each varsity will be assigned two regular game dates in fall that includes boys and girls soccer, field hockey, and football. In the spring, it includes boys and girls lacrosse with each team receiving two games. This totals 12 night games. Again, for me, this is very prescriptive of the, you know, the planning and zoning, basically the planning and zoning commission from the board of education, what, how they run their field usage. So yep. um, number two, in addition to the 12 regular Night games, playoff games are estimated to average, average an additional five games per year and are permitted during the evening. I'm not sure what that is, or so. Or do we go to 17? Or I'm not sure how it seems. A little... It was just. It was again. <laughs> it was a prescriptive condition that they add had to add another condition to allow, allow a little leeway for playoffs. So, it, you know, you can see how this 
these provisions kind of pile up on, on each other and, and sometimes even contradict one another. Right. Um, any questions on those? See? Again, I assume that the purpose was then to um, limit, I guess, traffic and usage. Um, is that? Well, be careful. Like, you're only shifting traffic and usage. I mean, okay. as a condition of the special permit, you can't intensify use of the site. Okay. But the reality is you're just shifting games. Um, all these practices and all this activity happened at the high school just consolidated under daylight hours. Okay. It actually, you know, one of the arguments was because you're elongating use of the facility, you're, you're de-intensifying it because the traffic's not piling up on one another. There's, there's a little more leeway in the hours as, as again, as I think we discussed okay. five years ago. So it's, okay. um, yeah, and, and again, that's, that was a concern. I mean, it, you know, let's not put every sports activity at Darien High School under the lights. And, and so there is a provision about intensity use in the special program. We're going down in the weeds of okay. planning zoning now. Sorry. Okay. I asked. Not a hat that I chose to wear, so. <laughs> um, D, lighting facilities limited to football stadium. Uh, section one, no other field at the Darien High School property may be lit or illuminated for evening, athletic, or other activities. So this, again, was uh, something that basically ties the hands of the Board of Education, the district. Um, there, there's, there's also something in this provision where they can't pursue lighting of any other school field. Uh, it was done under the auspices of lighting creep. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, again, a standstill restriction that I don't think is appropriate to put on a, uh, on a school board or a administration. Not that there's any intent right now, but who knows for the future. So. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, three, proposed conditions for new balance sound system. A, audio specifications. One, the PA system will be permitted to be used only during DHS games. Music of the PA system is allowable only prior to DHS games. Music is not allowable during practices. Music from the high school band incidental to the game e.g. musical cheer or score on scoring will be allowable throughout the entirety of all DHS varsity games. However, performance by the marching band in the event that a marching band was formed in the future would be limited to halftime and or prior to the game. Similar to the current DHS band, a marching band could play throughout the game from the bleachers. All band practice will be limited to daytime hours. So I have a question on this. Is, do we use the PA system for graduation? Does anyone know? Uh, Jeff would know. No, no, not, not that particular piece. Okay. We bring it on a separate one. Thank just, you. Just for the record, Mr. Tomeo said uh, from the booth uh, said no. They they bring in a separate PA system uh, for graduation. Is is that because that's a better that's better for graduation, or is that because of this agreement? Do we do we bring in a separate PA system because we have to, or is it actually more effective? More okay. Yeah. okay. It's more the, effective. The the okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Um, but again, I think ties us, you know, again, I don't think we're, we're looking to have you know, music blasting throughout the PA system, but if you wanted to run a, a pep rally, if you wanted to use a PA system, it seems like that would be a reasonable request for the school. To yeah, and legally, and I'm not an attorney, but it does delve into almost true controlling of you know, basically the curriculum of the school district. So, you know, but if you, if you peel this back, what, what I think it was trying to achieve is like, let's not have, let's not crank tunes or the PA system for use sports games. And I, I would highly, uh, you know, agree with that, but let's, let's find a way to take that paragraph and put it into one line right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and just allow for our high school use in some way, shape or form. Um. Number two, operation of the PA system must comply with the sound pressure levels as presented by the applicant and depicted on exhibit A1 attached here, so, which is appendix 4.4, sound pressure levels and applications, applicants application material. So there is a supporting document, I think, that gave the provisions of uh, the sound. Um, hold it, I had it. Here. Give it to you, just so you can It's the... Uh, Application for DHS Stadium Lighting Project, the project narrative 
um, actually all three of these documents are right on the PNZ department page. If anybody's looking for it, Alan, I'll, I'll I think I might've sent you the link, but I'll yeah, you yep. to you. Um, but it's really easy. All three documents, the agreement, the narrative and the uh, special permit. So just for those out there. Um, so again, I, I think it gets a little, a little detailed. Right. You're going to use a sound system that was installed, basically, is what it's saying. We're not going to. To enhance it. Yeah, is that is that something that should? That sounds like in, in the like hard coding. Like, is that something that should be written more broadly to to honor the point, but not specify which sound system? Yes, I mean that, that's something we'll probably work with. The you know, uh, you, you we're probably going to the board should recommend to the administration that as we kind of draft this, that you, we bounce it off the attorneys to uh, school attorneys. Um, but Thank yes, you. I think that's a good point. Um, that's section four project monitoring. A compliance committee will be formed by the outset of each fall season chaired by the director of facilities, including not more than two DHS neighbors chosen by abutting neighbors from the north and east sides of the property to review issues of non-compliance and register by committee members and any other concerns that may arise. The compliance committee may make recommendations to Darien High School concerning alleged non-compliance or impacts associated by associated with the approved permanent lighting facility and new balance sound or PA system. The compliance committee shall be advisory only and will meet at least one time per year as needed to ensure compliance with any approval conditions. Mr. Lynch, this, this occurs regularly or once a year, correct? Yes, we meet yes. in November in the superintendent's office, Chris Manfredonia, <clears throat> myself, superintendent, and the neighbors. And we have a nice discussion about how the last year went. I'm fine. Perfect. I like that concept. I think that, right. I think yeah. that, 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 you know, that allows us to be the good neighbors that we're trying to be. And, um, and also allows feedback to come come back to us. So, um, okay. And then last is uh, the time frame. The conditions provided in this exhibit shall apply to the approved permanent lighting facility and PA system for a period of five years from the effective date of this approval. During this five-year time period, the Darien Board of Education agrees not to submit nor consent to the submission of any application to the Planning and Zoning Commission seeking to modify any condition contained herein that would be less or more restrictive unless such modification is required to comply with any law or approval to install, construct, or use permanent or temporary lighting facilities or an upgraded PA system in any other field, including a track located at the Darien Free School property or any other Board of Education property. After the five-year period, the conditions contained herein shall remain in effect unless the Board of Education allows an application with the Planning and Zoning Commission seeking A, approval to modify, change, or eliminate any condition contained herein, or B, approval for any new or upgraded permanent or temporary lighting facilities or PA systems on a DHS property or other Board of Education property. So that, I mean, that's basically the outline of how this agreement terminates, and as we discussed earlier. So um, that certainly would be in the, the application, uh, you know, to, to amend the, um, Adopted resolution. Okay. Any other questions or comments? That's it for the agreement. Yeah, um, I just want to make sure that we didn't miss anything that's in the agreement or in the final adopted resolution and not covered in the agreement. But again, we'll, we'll probably, uh, as I, we recommend, we'll, we'll make sure that we have this adopted resolution document. Um, because that is the document that we're going to be amending uh, or seeking to amend um, with the board. Um, Alan, do you ask about, I would guess the process, you know, going forward, um, what's, what's the schedule that the board would discuss this and how would we, uh, you know, notify the community that we want to get some comments as well. So, uh, we have a, we basically I think it's 22nd, 23rd, 22nd is, is the next meeting. Uh, so you have time to notify people. It also as a courtesy to to uh, the neighbors who are noted in that agreement. I would have to speak to them, obviously. Um, uh, it'll be it'll just be also be very important that you know we're very clear here about 
um, both from a minister point of view, what we would like to see or not, but from a board point of view, uh, like what, what are the issues from from the board that they're most concerned about? And I want to make make sure we're talking about we're not. Are we talking about eliminating potentially or just revising? Just to be clear, uh, revise which document, Alan? I'm sorry, we're we're looking to revise. At least this is my view. We're looking to revise the special permit. Yes. The special, okay. The in doing so, the agreement actually states that the agreement goes away once we file uh, that amended uh, proposed amendment to the Planning and Zoning Commission. It'd be again. I, I'm one of nine members on the board, and we can discuss it as a board. But it'd be my um, my strong recommendation that we don't enter in a standstill agreement, but we communicate to the you know, those that are concerned that, you know, we're, again, they'll, they'll see what we're trying to amend um, and we're not looking to change anything um, in the near future. I don't think there's any plans for additional lights at any of the school facilities that I've heard of in the community, but we also don't want to tie people's hands if, if they do find a, a reason to pursue that. So that answer your question from my yes. standpoint? Yes. Um, I think from, from a communication point of view, you can, I'm not so sure the, um, uh, even though I talk about the next upcoming board meeting, that maybe at that board meeting you decide to, the board decides to share the actual process itself uh, for community members and so on, so that it's officially noticed at a meeting so that okay, the, the uh, you know, the neighbors and or members of youth organizations and the general community really have a, a good idea and a good notice of, of what's what's to come at the following meeting. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I didn't. I can't hear very well. So basically, Alan said the next board meeting, we kind of do what we've done as a board, yeah. highlight the areas that we would look to change. Okay. And at that meeting, you know, uh, notice the community that we're looking for input. Okay. And then the following meeting, if I understood you correctly, Alan, have some sort of community discussion. Yeah. Final board discussion. Yeah. And. Uh, and in, in, in the meantime, they can always send emails and, and communications that way as well. So okay. That is, did I, you're, you're this yes, sound, I, yeah, oh. I mean, at this point, at this point, I don't know that, I think the benefit of, of um, well, one, we need to close it out. I mean, that's, we've been talking about it, so it's, it's important to uh, complete the circle in some capacity, but also I don't know at, at the, um, at the expense of, of not giving people the opportunity and proper notice that just to, to take a take a meeting and, and outline clearly what's going to happen at that following meeting. Okay, Thank perfect. Thank yeah, you. we agree. So I think it's really important that we're very very clear about what the goals are. So I think we should decide. On, you know, the three the committee should be very clear about why we've in, embarked on this discussion. So I would I would documented as the three goals would be one to honor the spirit of the agreement, two to revise the special permit. Um, and eliminate the standstill agreement, uh, meaning that mechanism of standstill. And then the third would be to return appropriate decision making to the to the district. Um, and so I think, again, I think we need to be very, very, very clear um, every time we talk about why we're embarking on this discussion. Um, so I think when maybe when we present it to the board, it could be with kind of those three goals at the forefront. Um, what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I, that's great. I think, yeah, you summarized it well. So make sure you, you, you send that out to everybody, <laughs> please. Yeah, I mean, I, again, there is no, I don't think there's any intent for wholesale change to the conditions. There's tweaks, there's cleanup. And to your point, you know, um, return that autonomy in terms of managing the fields. I mean, I, I just think of how the fields are managed during the day and there aren't many conditions right. imposed. And so just extend that kind of autonomy through the whole time period that the fields will be used, including the lights. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Sheney, I, I would say that um, uh, you're correct in that, um, but what we've, we just haven't worked with, with the community members and the neighbors, um, the tweaks that I've heard, right, that potentially administration might recommend, board recommend, or otherwise, um, in their eyes, might be more significant than tweaks. So I just, I just point that out. Um, doesn't mean to say we're not going to do it or we're not going to support it, but 
um, I, I just I just know that some of them are are going to be uh, potentially significant issues for for the neighbors, which which is you know that, that they may well be, but. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know what decision the board's going to come to. So, um, yeah, yeah I can call them tweaks myself, but some even on the board might find them significant. So, yeah, again, we're, we're looking, in my mind, our roles in the Board of Education do the best interest. You know, we represent the community in, in general, a broad, a broad swath of, you know, when managing this facility, a broad swath of, of people, so uh, including the neighbors. So, so in addition to the, the goals, we also want to see, I think, um, do we want to, the board to walk through or do we want kind of to give an outline to the board of what we've identified as the areas that require a second look and then this any supporting documentation. So I think we've identified timing, usage of fields, number of games per team, band use and the sound system. I might be missing something. Uh, the fireworks. Too. Fireworks. Um, maybe we want just a brief outline to the board so that we can direct what people are looking at. Um, and then to confirm, you know, like fireworks, we should probably see historically when fireworks are held. I think the community knows, but um, uh, band usage, could we just get a little statement from the music director, Alan? Yep. Thank you. Well, we can, we can have responses to, to, to uh, if the subcommittee so desires, we could have a response to the administrative response to those uh, for next week that, yeah, that yeah, are for the fourth, next board meeting. That's okay. We could have that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be great. And Chris, Chris, Mr. Manfred, don't need to weigh in on the field usage of specific teams and so on. And that makes the most sense because that's a priority of what we, we care most about, if you will. I mean, it's yes. important the community has access to the facility, but number one priority is that we're managing the facility in the best interest of our, our students and, uh, you know, the programs at the high school. Do we, is, is talking about revenue uh, relevant at all for this discussion? Not for no, me, no, I, don't think, I think this is a policy discussion matter. Okay. okay. All right. Any, any other questions or comments? Alan, you're clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. I think our next item was uh, public comment. For participants via Zoom, please click the raise hand option. Each participant will have up to three minutes to comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mrs. McCannon, Mrs. Sini, so move. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Have Thanks, Alan. Feel better. Thank you, guys.